At the beginning of season two, we pick up directly where season one left off. We end on season one with a series of cliffhangers and begin season two there, answering those questions and launching into the even larger stories of season two. Jake and Category are off to the races on how can we capitalize on this tape. You know what to do. Get it published as soon as possible. And then I will arrest Tozawa personally. In planning the second season, we very much wanted to expand our palette and we wanted to open up the show into the city even more. Season one is a launch pad for season two. Our story expands in a way that creates this vast chest match with the audience. The characters are trying to see how things connect. No comment. We created the worlds of the hostess clubs, the world of the police, the world of the yakers, the world of newspapers. My goal was to burrow deeper, deeper in. At the end of episode one, we have the loss of this mysterious tape. Jake you know this wasn't an accident. Ah! One of the things that was most challenging about this season was that our production plan was to shoot blocks of two episodes. But episode two picks up three months later. It's a complete reset. Samantha has just opened her new club. Sato is healthy, and Jake is no longer pursuing Yakuza. I'm keeping my nose clean. As you said, other crimes to be exposed. We have two main new characters this season. At the beginning of season two, Hayama gets pulled in by Ishida, and it's a terrible fit from the start. <laughs> My goal was to create strong characters that would shake up and challenge existing leads that we've come to know and like to see them in a different light. So for Katagiri, we created the role of Nagata. Another area where we wanted to go deeper is in the nightlife and the world of the hostess clubs. Sam is opening her club, but really it's sort of an illusion because she's made a deal with the Yakuza. For Club Polina. I worked very closely with Kikuo Ota, our brilliant production designer, and from the very beginning, we wanted it to be more Japanese in its aesthetic. In the first series, a lot of the dresses I wore were 90s Kate Moss, Japanese women, as a mama-san, typically wear kimono. Kazuko Kurosawa created the most gorgeous dresses for me. They took the style of painted fabrics and made these really gorgeous dresses for Sam as mama-san that still had that structure of a kimono, but was maybe more appropriate for a Western actor to wear. Season one, we are telling a story about careful what you wish for. And season two, our paradigm was crossing the Rubicon. The Rubicon, the river that must be crossed, is what am I willing to do to help keep alive the people I love, and what does that leave me at? You know, this is a really bad idea. Everything you do has consequences, and I think Jake starts realizing more and more, everything I've done has had these consequences. In Jake, there was a sense of moth to the flame of violence and a pull towards the darkness. All through season two, we're telling a story of a young person growing up and the sort of pain of growth. The pain for our young Sato, our young Samantha, Jake. Like, this is the story of how hard it is to grow up. Having responsibility changes things. And looking at all of our principal characters in season two, they are deeply changed. They've all been through life-altering experiences, and now it's a real big reset to send them off on new adventures. The new people that they've become or the ways in which they changed is really the driving force behind the stories that happen in season two. Watch yourself. Don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. I 
have to remember that.